Yeah, yeah, it's the Cocktail 615, and what I'm doing right now is about to introduce y'all to my relationship series, okay? Um, well, let me tell you how this works. Uh, I put out a, a Facebook post of, of about an idea that I had, and I had a couple of people um, reach out and said that they would love to help me out through this exercise. And what I did was I asked them to give me three questions that they would ask on a So You Want to Date Me application and tell me a deplorable or a moment that changed you into uh, where you are in, in relationships now. So I got single people, married people, people that are taken, people that don't know, people that are celibate you know i got the, the spectrum out here so i hope you all enjoy it just stay tuned um i probably got mm, close to 10 12 people who, who participated so there's no telling how it's gonna come out but uh i hope y'all enjoy What's up, y'all? It's the Cocktail 615. It's your boy, Trey, man. We are still in our relationship series, and I got one of my homegirls, my Facebook friends here, the man, to help me out. Um, and, and you know what? I'm probably going to keep this going because I've got a lot of feedback from it. You know, people have been saying, I'll oh, keep the relationships, and this is how you should do it. This is the questions that you should ask. And, you know, I'm all for constructive feedback, but then again, well, man, shut your ass up. But anyway, <laughs> what we going to do, man? Um, I'm going to create a baseline for the people that are listening to kind of figure out, you know, who you are. And I'm going to give you a period to, uh, you know, really tell the folks what you want them to know. So, what's your age? 35. What's your race? Black. What is your relationship status currently? Single. All right. And what is your sexual orientation? I like men's. <laughs> <laughs> are you currently sexually active? Uh, not... <laughs> no, <laughs> but it's not, not by not, choice. No, okay. All right. <laughs> um, how many exclusive adult relationships have you had? And we can say from the age of eighteen. Um, probably three. Wow, three. Like that's my boyfriend. Three. Three. Oh. I mean, I've dated guys, sure. but it like, wasn't exclusive. It wasn't exclusive. Okay. Have you ever been married? No. Engaged? No. Do you have any children? I do not. And what city do you live in? Nashville. Nashville, six more by What's You up? know what it is. <laughs> do you think of yourself as an introvert or an extrovert? Hmm. I, I got a feeling. You know what? Contrary to people's beliefs of me, I am an introvert. But I have a very big personality. And I think people mistake having a big personality to wanting to be around people all the time. Um, you know, but I think my growing up as an only child, I've been so used to being by myself that that is my comfort. That is how I recharge. So when I am in surroundings, I can have that big personality. So I think... Overall, I'm a little bit of both because I do like to have my fun, you know, shout out to my sorority sisters, you know, but at the same time, I want to be at home yeah. and I like to relax yeah. and just do me. What is your greatest weakness as a significant other? I am a planner and I want to plan out everything. I want, and I want you to plan too. Um, and that whole go with the flow when people say, oh, I just go with the flow, I literally roll my eyes. Like, ugh. What do you mean go with, with the, the flow? flow? Yeah. Because sometimes you got to tell people where you flowing. And that requires planning. I know where I'm going, and I need to know if you're going to be on this trip or not. And if you're not going to be on this trip, I don't need to plan thinking you're going to be on the trip. And with that, that's when you get your feelings hurt because you're worried about, you know, you know, I have plans. I know where I want to be with my profession, you know, where I want to be in life. And somebody's going with the flow. That means they can also flow away when you really thinking they're going to be around. So you got to have a concrete decision on what you want to do. Have you ever been intimate with someone you did not find attractive? If so, why? Mm. Uh, mm. Be honest now. Be honest now. You, you ever so, smashed somebody who was kind of raggedy? <laughs> I don't 
don't know if he was so raggedy, but you know what people might call lame. Yeah. You know, I think Mike thought he was attractive, but he just didn't have a swagger. Right, you know? right, right. I didn't tell my homegirls about it or nothing, but you know, it happened. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you know, I have, um, and I'm not going to uh, be, oh, man, it was her personality. Yeah. The, man, you know, it's just that time of day, that time of night. She, she, she throwing it, man, I'm going to catch it. You know what I mean? So and it that's wasn't, real. And that happens for ladies, too. I don't think. Oh, yeah. I don't think people. So it's a thing that people think ladies don't do that, but sometimes somebody's going and you just gonna go for right, it. Right, you know? you lonely. You know, you at home. Quarantine you, you, over. Co- hey, <laughs> you know this dude, he been sniffing after you, and he just, he all right. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He ain't just so. Yeah, I've, I've been there. Yeah. I've been there. How do you approach someone that you are attracted to? Man, man, I don't, I don't see you doing much approaching. You, you just don't see no approaching. So let me type. tell you what I don't like about men folk. They think I find myself an attra- as an attractive lady. Sure, okay. I, I mean, that's fine. They think because you're attracted, a lot of men just walk up to you and just throw it at you. You know, so they don't. A lot of guys don't attra- approach me as much. So I have found myself, you know, approaching guys when I want to. Um, I have slid in the DMs with, you know, a, a fabulous line. No, okay, okay, um, okay. But, you know, I'm a sports person, by, uh, you know, by nature. And my dad is the reason why I'm into sports now. Don't you like the Pittsburgh Steelers or something? You know <laughs> Yeah, I, I, that's you how you know. keep up with somebody on Facebook, man. Battle of Philly. Man, you know what I'm saying. Philadelphia uh, Eagles, we in this thing. I just need y'all to win more Super Bowls so you come, come talk wow, to my Jesus, Steelers. So, man, Jesus, you know. we in that thing, though. Know? <laughs> so... Sports, you use sports to kind of... Sports is a, is a very good way to get guys' attention that are truly into sports. Um, and, you know, I bought a guy a drink at the club before. Sexy. I mean... That's sexy. I mean, I've even pulled one of them having what he's having, and I hated to drink, but it worked. Do you recognize any drawbacks of monogamous relationships? <sighs> I mean, if you just got a fear of missing out, but drawbacks? Monogamy, though. Um, it's monogamy. It is. Yeah, that means that it's only you. But that can be a beautiful thing, though. Eh, it, it can. Not so, to, not, being only you doesn't mean that other people are not attractive, right? Uh, like, what? Mm. I can't. I can't ever see myself having a partner and him just deciding that no longer he thinks Kelly Rowland is fine. Mm. Like, that's impossible, right? Okay. Okay. Well, I mean, we, we're talking about, okay, the opportunity to be with somebody, to be with Kelly Rowland. It's like you are you are you hanging that up if you saying that you practice monogamy. It's like even if Kelly Rowland was in here covered in honey with nothing on, it's like and my girlfriend is in here. It's like that shit is over with. You you are a monogamous person. Okay. <laughs> mm, You're not sucks. going. I'm, that you, sucks. No lie, I might give him the pass. Yeah, you Kelly gotta, you <laughs> on a scale of one to ten. 10 being the high, how would you rank the importance of sexual chemistry in relationships? A 20. A 20. Sexual. (laughs) That is important. You think so? It's so important. And it's also important to tell your partner when you uh, have desires Mm -hmm. and needs. And be open about where you are and your experiences and what you want to. and, And then to have that conversation and it moves and the person opens up, man. So, so now let me ask you this. At what point of the relationship should you have that conversation if there is a conversation that needs to be had? Because I'll, I'll tell, tell you what my on sexual chemistry is as soon as um, you finish. As soon as possible, especially if it's mm-hmm. someone you want to be intimate with. Because what you don't want to do is have it and be like, oh, they trash. Yeah. And it's like, let me tell you what you need to do. <laughs> you were trash in this yeah, one. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah. do that anymore. <laughs> anymore. Anymore. Do not... Hit me. Do not spit on me. Like, come on. Who told you to do that? Right, you right. know. Yeah. But I think, and then some.
sometimes those conversations can come naturally, just about what you like with your flirting and stuff, yeah. and then you can kind of tell, no, I don't really want you to call me a bitch. Yeah. You know? that's, yeah. Not, that's not me. I'm not calling you daddy. Like, I, I, got, I got a daddy. I got a daddy, daddy in right, my right, life. Right, Shout right, out to right, you. Right, you right, know? right. How would you define the term, we are dating? Because you said, oh, I've dated plenty of people. I've dated them. You know, I've only had three years. This is my, this so, is my you void. I've only had. <laughs> so how, I, many, how many people do you think you have dated? <laughs> so I don't believe in talking. That's so weird for me. I don't even know what that means. Right. I because, think that's our term in our generation. Like yeah, we talking. We talking. You know. And, and don't get. And I, I, I have said it before because I think that's what society has told me right. to say. But to be honest, you're dating that person. Right, you're dating that person. You're getting to know them. You want to know them better. You know. And then the whole dating exclusively. We in a relationship. It's right. no different. So right, for right, me, right. dating is I've made a conscious decision to get to know you. Okay. And, and, However, that is. Okay. All right. So, how many people do you think you dated? I don't know, dated? man. Just, just give me a roundabout figure. Between what time? What time period? Of my okay, life? let's say from the time that you graduated undergrad okay. until now. But we won't even go back to eighteen because so, I mean right. I know a couple College. of people you dated at eighteen. <laughs> <laughs> they don't count. College. You weren't really an adult. Um. So the last fourteen years. Gosh. 20, we 25. Gonna, we going to say between 20 and 25. 25. Yeah. What personality traits are you attracted to? I love the romance guy. Um, I like guys that are confident. Um, I like guys that's obviously honest and caring. Um, I like a guy that could be in tune with his feelings. Okay. Um, Sound then. like you naming a fucking unicorn. <laughs> like, <laughs> probably. Uh, yeah. No, I'm just, I'm just Pro- No, for but that's real, a, probably. That's a lot, though. That's yeah, a lot, though. It's a, it's a lot, and yeah. it, it's hard to find, um, especially the whole uh, in tune with this feelings piece, especially because I'm so in tune with my feelings. Like, I'm not one of those like, how you feeling today? I'm not an okay person. I'm like, I'm melancholy. I'm sad. Right. I'm distressed. Yeah, you know, yeah, I, yeah, I know so how, how exact, yeah. exactly how I feel. I think men know exactly how they feel, too. They don't express it. They just don't express it. And so if if it's not something that I can project as strong, in terms of feeling, oh, I'm confident, or I am, oh, I got my shit all the way together. Like if it's something outside of that, like man, I'm just really man, like Eeyore today. Like mm, which way did it go? Like so, I, I think it's hard for men to really put themselves in that space. But if you're dating somebody and it's a serious relationship, mm. shouldn't you not be comfortable enough to say that? It's a man thing, though, boo. Y'all weird. Yeah, we are. Because I'm definitely gonna tell you today is not the day. Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the high, how would you rate the importance of religious beliefs in a relationship? I'm going to give it a 7. A 7. Yes. That's I mean, that's like that's my sexual chemistry. That's the that's the top you can get with me, like yeah. me going in. Yeah. So I mean, that's pretty high. It's that, pretty high. You know, just for the simple fact that um you can agree to disagree, but when you get into marriage and kids, um, how are we going to raise those children? That's when it becomes a big deal. And if you have allowed time to go by, and then all of a sudden there's a, a little one that comes in to where you have to then do that, I think you really put yourself in a predicament to see different end. I mean, and you know, y'all can say, oh, I'm going to let my child decide, but you have to still give them the foundation to what they're going to do. So, I went to church because my daddy said, I'm going to church. The church. <laughs> yeah. Now, when I got older, I was able to, you know, make those decisions, make those decisions right. and look into the religion and, you know, you know what I choose to believe in, grow in, but it's, it's going to come, especially when it's not even, you know, there's a difference of I'm Methodist and you're Baptist, but when you're Muslim and I'm Christian, yeah, that is, and, and, I, and I've done that relationship yeah. before. It's tough. It, it's a tough, I mean, because when, you know, he's decided the Ramadan, he's giving up sex, then you like, hey, you don't hey. do that in my Christianity. Right, right. You don't give that up, you know? Yeah. So you really have to be open to that. On a scale of 1 to 10, 10 being the high, 
How would you rate your physical appearance? <laughs> oh, yeah. We just we just danced around that. We one. danced around it. I'm going to give myself gonna... a solid eight. A, mm. a solid eight. A solid. I think I'm an attractive lady. And I think for years I've been very scared to say that because you don't want to come off as like cocky mm-hmm. or arrogant or sedity mm-hmm. or uppity or right. all these other None things. None of that. None of you that. You don't want to be None those, those things. things. You know what? It's okay to understand that you get by on a lot of times because you're cute. Mm. That's true. That's and, true. And it, it works in a lot of people. Say, <laughs> being light skin has worked for you. Oh, you yeah. know what I mean? Right. So, I, and it's okay to say those things as long mm. as you you have a, a personality to back it up. Because some people only rely on being that, cute. That, yeah, that's right. That's right. And that's, that's right. not enough. No, it's not. Right? But oh, my God. It's not. It's nowhere near enough. If you are with some girl, and it's because she's fine. Nine times out of ten, she is lacking in all the other areas. Like, completely. oh my god, oh my god, I've been with fine women, and they have and nothing I, to offer no, you. No, that's not true. That's not true. Not all of them. Not all of them. Not all of them. No, 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 not but all of them. But for the majority of them, it's like they always fall back on their looks or what they can provide you in terms of the physical. Have you ever knowingly been a side piece? If so, why? Knowingly, no. Uh, but I, I learned all the side uh, piece. No way. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, his wife called me. Uh, damn, why you got all the niggas that got girls that call you, you about shit? I don't know man, something about... The, again, I'm compassionate. I'm saying. Man, you the <laughs> magnet for messy-ass chicks, man. Right? Messy. But I... It wasn't messing her in. I mean, that was her husband. But I had no idea about her. Sure you didn't. I promise you I did not. I'm not saying that you did. Like, I mean, when I tell you the lies that were told were to the point of, like, I would never think someone could lie the way that he lied. Like, he lied about children that they had. He lied about... So I knew she existed as a baby mama. Right. Right? Right. Like, that's my baby mom. Right. You know? But they literally had just had a child, and he didn't even say anything about the new child. Oh, my God. You know? And she yeah. called me. Yeah. Yeah. So you was a sad piece. Yeah. Mm. But I brought a, that off instantly. But see, I've been a sad piece, too. But did you know it? Yeah. And you liked it? Yeah. Why did you like it? Because she got to go the fuck home. <laughs> For real, no. It's Ch- real, hold on. though. Chicks with kids and chicks that got a man are the best chicks to have if you play in the field because you got to go home. Everybody has to go home. I can see that, though. Yeah. Like, yeah. if you really don't want that commitment, but you no, like them kind of just. Yeah. Oh, when you call me, see, it's, and see, here's the thing. When you being a side piece, it's like you are called upon. And that's the only thing that I don't like about it. Do you know your love language? Yes. Okay, what is it? All of them. <laughs> I want it all. <laughs> so, here's my thing with love languages. Okay. Um, depending on where you are in a relationship and what someone brings you, that can change your love language. Um, I used to think all the time that I was quality time, but I learned that I was words of affirmation, but I think where I was at that time in that relationship, I was not receiving words of affirmation. Mm -hmm. So when I took the test, that's what I was yearning for. Yeah, yeah. Um, But I've been, you know, but I've been in a relationship where I heard all day, you're the coldest. (laughs) 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 You're the coldest. You're the best. And I want you and I need you. But, you know, the time wasn't there. So I think at that time, I yearned for the quality time so right, right. if you can give me all five flavors at one time boom we in there because i like a good gift too yeah, you know yeah, what, yeah, I mean? yeah. what woman does <laughs> what, what person doesn't like a good right. gift you know, i want I, you to take out the trash i hate it <laughs> please come to my house and take out the trash mine is physical touch you know i, I need to be touched in that way like for me to know that you like you care you you know you 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 value me that you know rubbing the back of my head you know when my fade is right you know what i'm saying or rubbing on my belly you know when you lay it (laughs) on my chest like i need that that is uh something that uh, i've learned through experience that all those other things yeah I, i need quality but and I think they play off of each other. Like, if you physically touching me, then you already giving me quality time. Right. 
And it, depending on how, how you looking at it and how far you touch it, what you touch, that <laughs> might be a gift. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So all of those things, they kind of intertwine in that way. But yeah, I need to be touched. On a scale of one to 10, 10 being the high, how would you rank your current relationship status and why? Maybe I would like your response to that. My current relationship status. Yeah. So we're going to talk about the guy that I'm currently talking to. Oh, uh, talking. Uh, you don't like talking. We don't, don't <laughs> like was, This is for y'all. Okay, yeah, okay, the, okay, the okay, other millennials. Okay. Here, we go, here we go. Here we go. The guy that I'm dating, because I am dating him, I'll be honest. Um, Right now, it's about an eight. And let me tell you why. Because... I am a woman, and I always have that. I have that feeling of so. Where where are we? But I will never ask him that. And if even if he hears this, I'm gonna say, Nah, I wasn't really talking about you. I'm gonna deny it <laughs> yeah. because you know you always want to know where you are. You want to be on the same page as people, but at the same time, um, because of my upbringing, I want him to take the lead on that. And if he waits too long and I'm off, I will have that exit interview with him to tell him <laughs> yeah, why yeah, yeah. I left. Well, listen. <laughs> this is why I left. Step into my office. <laughs> but for the, I mean, right now it's an eight. It's good. Yeah. The conversation is good. We uh, like the same things. Mm. Uh, Ooh. Uh, we enjoy each other's company. Y'all sound like best friends. <laughs> like uh, the same thing. Let me tell you something. <sighs> I, best friends, I use that very... That's a big term. Yeah. You don't use it lightly. Huh? I don't use it lightly. Sure. Though your partner should be your best friend, but you don't have to have a romantic relationship with your best friend. Yeah. See, I don't believe... I don't believe that. And, you know, when I hear that, oh, my, my like, woman is my best my friend. My best friend. Well, me, no, 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 the fuck no, she no, ain't. she's not. No, let me tell not. you. There's no way, my best friend, there's no <laughs> way the stuff that I tell her... Right, right. And I have a guy best friend. For sure. And it's stuff that I tell him that I would never tell him. <laughs> Right. Hey. Never. Not in a blue moon. Like, if he on, heard bro. it, it was because he snooped right. yeah. <laughs> and yeah. found it. And and that's the difference. Yeah. yeah. What is the most difficult conversation you never had with an ex? Never had with an ex. And what held you back from having it? So, in actually one of my past relationships, um, he called it off. It wasn't me. And I wanted to know why. But I never asked because I wasn't prepared for what that answer might be. You know, what did I do wrong? What was wrong with me? What those type of questions? And I just, I never asked them because you gotta be prepared for the answers. So if you, you don't ask something, and then you gotta be able to move on with those answers and and do the work or whatever it needs to happen for those things not to happen. And I wasn't ready for that. But well, you know what? You know, when you have a job and you decide to leave the job in good terms, they give you an exit interview. Mm-hmm. And, you know, you're able at that point to tell people, hey, you know, this is what y'all need to do better. This is why I'm leaving. This is what you can do to make me stay. You know, the exit, that's what I use my exit interviews for. Can you match them? Right, <laughs> you know what I'm exactly. Right. So I think in relationships, having exit interviews on both sides of it, whether you are a person that is, you know, ending it or the person that's on the other side, to, to have those answers, uh, dang, that's my phone, man, to have those answers um, given to you so you can transform so you can be better so you can not bring that same luggage that you still hold it into the next one exactly and i mean because uh, think about it we are a product of our environment we are a part a product of our experience and so if you think that you this is right this is how you're supposed to be this is and, and somebody is able to tell you now nah, you you might need to pull the reins back on that one i think that that would be beneficial for everybody everybody and do it where it's um you know, you're you're being open and honest, and you mature about it. Too. Yeah, it's yeah, not yeah, just yeah. the little things, and and then also being honest with where you are, because I think sometimes it's just about where a person is, and it might be moving too too soon. And instead of just saying I don't want to do this anymore, but like I'm not where you are. You right, know, right, give right. Give people the opportunity to either pump the brakes or get off the get off the ride. Man, you listen. The cocktail six one five has promoted <laughs> exit interviews for relationships. If you yeah. are hearing this, man, just set, set it up, set it up. Just go ahead and tell them, hey, man. You know, your macaroni was dry. <laughs> your chicken was burnt. Trash. Like, whatever it was, you need to be able to communicate with people because I think that that helps you. It's therapeutic for you, and it also helps them. Does size matter? 
Oh, good question. So, yes and no. Okay. Because at the end of the day, a micro penis can do nothing for you. I don't care how much you love him. Okay, what is a micro penis? You like, have to give me diameters. Like, like on hard, like three inches. Mm. That can do nothing. Where they do that at? <laughs> it, it is a real thing. Okay. So a micro penis can't do nothing. You out the game. Right. But you average. What is average? What do you think average is? Maybe like oh, it, Come on, come on, nah, I'm trying to I'm trying to get it together. So okay. like on her probably between five or six. Six-ish, maybe? That's average. That's so, like average. So if you like 5.7, you're at the top end of average. You're top end of okay, average. Okay, You know, that can work. That can work. Okay. That it can work. It can work. It can work. Because, again, when it comes to sex, it, if you're just for the act and just you just want to have the act of having sex, then that probably won't work for you. But there's a type of emotional ties to that some person. Mm-hmm. You know, there's the intimate. That five or six is cool. That we can work. We can work for that. We can work with that for, I mean, for a lifetime if you want to. Ooh. Okay, so that's lifetime, Dick. Five or six, you you in there for the lifetime, okay? You, I mean, for some people, it can for work. Some, okay, all right. You know, so, but, you know, I think... It does matter. It, yes. Yes, yes. Yes, yes. because for every for every person, I mean, no vagina was created equally, right? So, there's somebody who could take a 12-inch, and they like, eh, you're not doing nothing. You right. know, for some people, they're like... Uh-uh. That's too much. Like, and I've had conversations with my homegirls like, I don't need all that dick. Right. <laughs> Go on something with that. <laughs> yeah. Nobody wants that all the time, you know? Mm. So 12 inches, man, you're not all the time dick. Yeah, you the guy, you might you might be a, you know, I'm going to scratch the itch that she has right. today, dick. Mm. You know? See, mm. you know what? I think all men worry about that. And I'm not even going to answer it from the women's perspective because I've done that. I'm going to answer it from the man's perspective. Like, I'm not going to tell you how big I am or how long it is. That's not important. But the important part for a man is, am I adequate enough for the woman? Right. You know what I mean? And some men, like you talking about micro penis, that shit is real. That is so, real. So whether you, you know, you driving in the Tesla, you got the black car, you got the, you know, the Gucci shoes and the Gucci belt and the Gucci uh, I train. Can't have, like, I can't have sex with no Gucci shoes. Here we go. Here we go, though. But you are put together in a way that is attractive for females. You know what I'm saying? But when you get them drawers off, it's like, mmm. Damn, this nigga got micro penis. <laughs> you know what I'm that saying? Is, and, and so men, they they process that. And so like women, women, I, I will say this, and, and I might not be a victim to that. I might just be, you know, blessed in that way. Like women will tell you, oh man, yeah, yeah, you, you doing your thing, you packing, you this, that, and the third. And then when you when you hear from her home girl or you, your homeboy hears it from your home girl, you got micro penis. <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> Ooh, this gonna hurt your feelings. feelings. It is. And men and men, I mean that is a, that is. There are people that we still make fun of. That girls have said, "I don't know." No, he ain't man, gonna. Man, he is but not. you know that's in the eye of the beholder too, mm, no, right? Micro penis. I mean, micro penis. Micro penis. But I'm just saying, <laughs> I, you know, I, I've heard some girls. Be like he ain't got all that, and the other girl's like, eh, she was hating because he didn't like her. Right. You know, so you know you got that too. But micro penis is micro penis, and it, but yeah. everybody deserves love. Somebody's yeah. gonna love. Somebody them for gonna that. love them. Yeah. No. But I think they tend to do a lot more, so they can make up for that. Yeah. But yeah. sexual chemistry. They got to. They got to. They got to. Like Grey Worm. Like Grey Worm. Like you watch Game of Thrones, did you? Uh, you know okay. I did. Grey Worm. He did not have. A penis, but he got the baddest chick in the game on, on his thing. You know yeah. what I'm saying? So it's it's about how you how you come at her. It's it's about what you can do. I think more so than what size matters. Have you been able to accomplish all of your sexual fantasies? No. Uh, no. Why? 
Uh, Why? Like, what is holding you back from it's that? It's not me. Black men are prudes. Oh, really? Y'all are prudes. Really? Yes. Okay. Because there's an idea of what mm. sex is supposed to look like from a masculinity standpoint. Sure it is. Sure and, it is. Um, but you're talking about someone else's sexual experience and sexual fantasies. We're talking about yours. And I why know. You, okay, uh, but okay. I have to have a partner to do okay. that. Okay. All right. All right. Hold on now. Hold on now. She almost jumped across the <laughs> <middle>. <laughs> <laughs> I have to have a partner to do okay, those things. Okay, okay. And and everybody has to be open to it. So, so so three exclusive adult relationships and you still haven't been able to experience your sexual fantasies in that way? No. Damn. Man, that's that's fucking depressing. It is. Okay, all right. If, if you if you don't feel comfortable, I yeah, that's cool. If, no, I'm comfortable. Okay, what's a sexual fantasy of yours? You know, Mm. You know, I like a lot of ass play. Really? On both sides. Oh. I am interested. Okay. And what that could feel like being the more dominant person oh. from that oh. perspective. Oh, oh, see. And, and, and of, here's the thing, though. Here's the thing. Here's the thing. <laughs> listen, 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 listen. Some men like that shit, too. Yeah, but I, you, you, there's no good way to say that without. <sighs> Really not even if you know the person, right? I'm, I'm gonna tell you. Okay, I'm gonna tell you. Tell, I'm tell me. You. Give me give me the answer. You do it. You don't, uh, have, you don't have no conversation. You just do it. You just do it. So and, and in my experience, it's there's it, two ways you can respond to everything. Mm-hmm. The affirmative or the negative. That's true. So I would rather, if we're talking about ass, if you, whatever that it is that you want to do, that it's something that you just go, cause, because confidence goes a long way. Right. If you just go ahead and go for it, and, and that's something that I'm not into, that's something that I don't know enough about, then it's going to be like, whoa, check, right. check me out. Let me, let me know what we're doing, doing, doing over here. And so, and, 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 and the reverse side to that, it's like, you can't have an expectation of someone that you're not really to experience yourself. Absolutely. Do you like women or men? Men. Men. So Are we talking about sexually? The question says, do you like women or men? Okay, sexually I like men. Okay. As humans, I like women. Women. Okay. So I I want to take this a little more in depth. Okay. Um and I and I and I'll say, in terms of like, mm, that that is my preference on on who I choose to have is friends and company and and invest my time in, and that's definitely women. Um, I am um, a person that um, I like women. I, I've always been. Um, a ladies' man, so to speak. So, the 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 company of a woman, and it's not. It don't have anything to do with sex. It don't have anything to do with. Oh, I want to get on or me lying to her to try to man. Nah, I would rather be around women than men. It's like to me, that's like the unknown. You know, I try to say things. I try to do things to figure women out. And you, it, it doesn't matter even how, how hard you try, how how much you think you know. You all, you never know. You never know. And, and I think women are more prone to tell you the truth than men are. Absolutely. So even if you my best friend, I got a couple of women that I consider to be great friends there in my small circle and I know that they will tell me the truth you know some of my my best friend Steve man he gonna tell me the truth but he gonna tell me yeah he gonna he gonna tell me the truth in a way that don't make me feel like man I'm no, fucking I'm, up I'm gonna like, tell you trash right and so. you know I like to cultivate my my female friendships as well I think there is uh, especially with black women you know having to be there for each other and lift each other up I mean black women in the world today we just have a we, have, we carry yeah. a weight that most people won't understand and I think it takes another black woman to understand sure. that 
does. And no matter what it is. And so those friendships I hold very dear to me. Yeah. Like very dear to me. Yeah. But you know, I got a guy best friend that when I say I met him later on in life and it wasn't a oh I thought he was fine because all my homegirls think he fine he was literally like he was my homie's homie and he became the homie and when I tell you he tells me all the time he's like give it to me straight I'm like you already know no chaser what you need to know and and I think that and, and he also gives it to me straight too because sometimes I expect a guy to kind of think like me he's like nah <laughs> let me tell you what we're really thinking you know and, and, and you can appreciate those friendships which I do think you need to have a, a dear friend that you is do. not the same sex as you. You do. I'm drinking on um, Hot Perfect IPA. This is, uh, I guess, Yazoo Brewing Company, Nashville. I try to drink local beer. What you sipping on over there for the cocktail? You know, a little crown black and ginger ale. Jesus, Jesus. Give me another card. <laughs> Let me see that card. Mm. Yeah. Let me put on my sexy voice. What are your thoughts on polyamorous polyamorous relationships? Uh, no. <laughs> oh, I'm a monogamy type of girl. I am selfish. I am my only child. So what's mine? It's mine. Um, but if you're into that thing, I say, hey, do you? So I mean, okay. Uh, we talking about you though, not not what what I do. What you? Okay. So let's say you feeling the guy. You know, this is Mr. Wright, and he brings up this topic. You know, I, I, I love you, I care about you, but I am interested in being honest with you. And I look at other women, I am attracted to other women, and I, I, I want to have the ability to make those decisions like in a safe space. Not that I'm um, going out saying, I'm going to the weekend, and then you over Keisha house. You know what I'm saying? So you need to be honest about what you're doing. Right. And and I, I my, my goal for my future relationship is for us to be honest. And if they want to bring people into the relationship and stuff, I want you to be open and tell me that. Right. But, but just that, know that I'm not no, going. That's not for you. It's not for that, me. That's not for you. Um, yeah. Simply because, um, for me, <laughs> like I said, it's it the ideal of it doesn't move me. Yeah. You know and. I like what's mine is mine. And then I have this, which I don't know if it's a question in here, but this whole thing about loving multiple people at one time. Mm, and maybe. I, and I'm, I don't necessarily think that's true. But do you, have you ever loved multiple people at the same no. time? No. Never. I mean, uh, I love you. You hold me. Yeah, yeah. No, but I'm not. I'm talking you see about what I'm saying? That. But the intimate love, I just feel like if you're giving your all to someone, there is no room for anyone else. Mm. That's powerful. Like, like if there, if if mm. someone has your heart, the way that we speak of it and the love that we yearn for, there's no way someone else can come in and get that from you. Okay, now is that something that ever goes away though? Because um, <laughs> I, I believe love is forever. Like if I loved you. Like, no matter if we together or, you know, we even talk anymore, like, yeah. that love is still... Well, I, I mean, you're going to care about people, right? Like, but at the same time, and you, you will have love for them. Mm. But I think when you find that partner that makes you not even think about that person mm, anymore... Jesus. I mean, that's... That's something. That's that, that one. That's the one. Yeah. So it's almost like, have you ever been, thought you was in love with somebody? Sure. And then somebody else came around, you realized, I really don't love this yes. You yes. know? Yes, yes. And that has happened to me before where I thought this was the love of my life. Like, this was it. And then that relationship ended and I met someone else and I was like, that wasn't love. Yeah, we back, man. We finna get ready to pull some cars out of this box. Um, and, 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 the, and, the, and the information that is in the box comes from all of the people that have participated. Um, and, and what they had to do, they had to tell me, um, if you were going to interview somebody that wanted to date you, what would be the top three questions that you would ask them? Okay? So that's what's in that box. And so what I want you to do is pull one, give it to me, I'm going to read the question, and then we'll talk about it. Uh, Okay, it's a red one. Uh, woo. Okay. <laughs> All right. It's a beautiful cut. Have you ever been cheated on, forgave the offense, and stayed in the relationship? Ooh. Uh. I have been cheated on. Right, right. I did not forgive. Oh. And but I stayed. And that was a part of the problem. problem. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So <sighs> I have this idea about cheating, that cheating um, is the end result of something else. 
You know what I mean? The reason why people cheat is because you're not receiving all of the ingredients that you need to make the relationship work. So in retrospect, in hindsight, what do you think that was that caused him to cheat on you? Because I mean, hey, and you know what I'm saying? I'm, I'm going to tell the folks that's listening, she, she nice looking. She ain't no, <laughs> she ain't no smile now. But what do you think that that was? Can you be open in that? Absolutely. So over the years, I've kind of... I am extra, as you can see how I came in here yeah, today. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and sometimes that is a lot. So I think I kind of overgave and gave more into a relationship that Ooh, really wasn't there. Yeah. And because of that, uh, sometimes people want a way out. Yeah. And maybe yeah. that was his way out. Yeah. Um, but, you know. Working okay. hard for stuff. Okay, now why did you stay? Like, what 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 what, what allowed you to say? You know what? I don't, man, this he ain't shit. But I don't stay young with and, him. Young and dumb, okay. but okay. I do think I really stayed because I put so much into it. I didn't want to give up on it. And it's like uh, at that particular time, everybody's rooting for the relationship. Your friends liking, your family uh, like him. Right. You know, his mama calling you. Yeah. You know, you just got the best potential mother-in-law and you don't want to give up and so that's why I stayed but as you can see it didn't work out so how did you find out what what, what did you go through some text messages no, I am not a snooper okay I do not believe in snooping <laughs> please don't snoop people it's not worth your time energy any of that well, you know I'm checking that I watch <laughs> I'm just yeah, you know I'm that. going through all the, no I'm just <laughs> <laughs> don't snoop let me tell you why because people are stupid it's going to come out anyway mm-hmm. and that's exactly how this happened okay um but Believe it or not, the the lady that he cheated on me with, she reached out to me. Oh, she was messy as hell. She was very messy, but the way she said it kind of felt like she almost felt bad just a little bit. Yeah. You know, because she saw the pictures on, you know, social media and stuff oh, like that. And so she man. reached out to me and she, oh. she came with receipts. So oh. it wasn't a... It wasn't a, oh, I'm just going to mess it up. Man, she Russell Russ Haven. Like, come <laughs> on, man. She's, no, man. She, why are you going to do what you do and then take, nah, You nah, know, so I she came with receipts. So, I mean, you know, I pulled the receipts up and just uh, yeah. laid it out there. Like, yeah, so yeah. how are we going to get out of this one? Right, 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 right. How was your relationship with your family, mom, dad, et cetera? Uh, I have been blessed. I have... I know everybody thinks their parents are the best, but when I tell you, I I, w- I was raised in a dual parent home. Um, my parents were married for 32 years. Um, they they are divorced now, but I mean, I was 30 when they divorced, right? So I was able to grow up in a very loving home. My grandparents have been married for 62 years, so I've been around. And you know, when I really think about it, a lot of people in my family are married and they stay married, you know, for the most part. So I've been in a very loving home. Home. My family on my mom's side can be um, a little extra. That's where you get it from. Yeah, That's why you so. I do. <laughs> I do get my, but you know what? They are the most caring people I've ever sure. heard. And the most inviting, which is a part of the problem because people fall in love with my family and yeah, want to stay around yeah, for yeah, them. Yeah, yeah. And I'm like, they ain't gonna love you no more when I drop you. <laughs> <laughs> but they are so loving and so caring that people want to okay. be around them a lot. Um, so over Overall, my my childhood was very good. Yeah, and it might have skewed my way of looking at life uh, yeah. for a long time as well. Sure. Now, now, do you think that you have the prototypical type of upbringing? You know, dual parent. You know, mom and dad loved each other. You 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 know, you got brothers and sisters. Nope. Okay, only child. They they were able to show you attention equally. Um, um, raise you and you take pieces from both sides of them equally to make who you are. Now, do you think that that's somebody that you need to be with in relationships? Do you need that? Mm-hmm. Listen, so growing up, I thought my parents were rich, right? right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> you know, private school girl, you know, if I asked for something, as long as I was good, I pretty much got it. Um, but when you meet someone who's from what people call the other side of the railroad tracks, they really don't understand your lifestyle. Like, I never forget I dated a guy years ago, and he finally came around my family, like, introduced him to my, he's like, your family just sit around in the carport, have drinks, and have a good time. And my family, that's a fight. Something crazy gonna break out, you yeah, know? I'm yeah. like, he's like, y'all, y'all just sit around and laugh. I was like, well, you do this every Sunday, you know? So, I think 
it has to be where they understand your lifestyle. Sure. You know, and then, you know, when it comes to that, normally the person who didn't grow up in poverty has to be more understanding. And I think that's an issue in a lot of relationships Mm -hmm. is that I have to understand that you were born in a single parent home and you really don't know one side of the parents and you had a struggle and I got to be kind to your struggle. When reality is, you know, you should be kind to me too, that I really didn't have to deal with that. And Mm -hmm. I'm trying to understand, but you got to understand where I'm coming from too. Not saying that it's better. Right. Because I don't think that it's necessarily better. I think people who had struggles that I didn't have are a lot stronger in other aspects of life than I am not. Sure. But at the same time, it's like, hey, it's okay for me to know my mom and dad and have a relationship with them. Right. 